Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Contingency Plan Podcast. My name is Jedi Master Dave, and with me, as always, is Darth Austin. Hello, everyone. Countdown, Keno- Countdown Kenobi, Countdown to Kenobi, still going on. So we are we're in May, and we're actually recording this on May the 4th, so May the 4th be with you. That's right. May the 4th be with you. Mm-hmm. Everyone else showing their Star Wars swag is like, well, I'm actually recording on my Star <laughs> Wars podcast. It was, to- <laughs> yeah, it's totally by accident, too. We, we got into this whole uh, rhythm of recording on Wednesday nights as opposed to, you know, normally we're doing Saturday nights or like Sunday afternoon ish type of thing. But, yeah, um, and then uh, honestly, it was mainly because of the TV shows. Yeah. The last few shows we've covered. Um, it didn't start with Mando. I think that was Thursday nights, but I think it was maybe either, uh, was it Visions? Obviously, mm. Boba Fett was Wednesday. It might have been uh, Bad Batch, it, season seven of... Uh, I thought Bad Batch was releasing on Fridays. Wasn't that a Friday show? Was it, it Clone might've, Wars? It might have been Boba Fett. Was it Boba Fett? Might have been Seems Boba like Fett been that changed it. have been doing it longer than Boba Fett. Okay. I don't think so. I think it was Boba Fett, and that's when we kind of started doing it. It works okay. out a little bit better, weirdly enough. Yeah, I, I personally, I don't know how you are with your weekends, but the Bad Batch thing wasn't really all that fun for me. Friday <laughs> night's not the yeah. best night to record, and yeah. it wasn't even something to really look forward to all that much. So, Well, yeah, I mean, the I, I, I think... Um, the whole post pandemic screw this attitude uh, really got me out more. So my weekends are pretty full. Um, yeah. I, I, I really do sort of plan out weekends a lot more now. Uh, well, heck just getting into it. Uh, last weekend did uh, I did a Clippers game on Friday, little $5 Fridays and got a got a nice pretzel and a couple of couple of boiled hot dogs. That was fun. And then we all went to a crew game the following day on Saturday. Yeah, so, we actually ended up getting some amazing seats for half the game. I, yeah, <laughs> yeah, we got there a little little late, but yeah, we, I mean, we had a good dinner. Uh, mm-hmm. A couple a couple beers at uh, w- one of the one of the local local eateries. And then, uh, yeah, walked down to the game, got there a little late. Everybody was kind of dawdling <laughs> a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Uh, got in. Uh, you know, we had the general admission tickets, which is um, the, the, what the crew calls the the Nord deck. And, uh, yeah, we were kind of looking around, and everything was pretty full. And we kind of snaked down in the first and second row, which, I mean, they were good, and they were also annoying. Like, I was right in front of their, like, you know, radley subwoofer. <laughs> and uh, at one point, one of the little photographer guys in a pink uh, uh, pink safety vest, n- never saw a pink safety vest, but there you go, uh, with this big old camera was just sort of standing in my eye line. But, yeah, I know it was good. I mean, they actually won. They scored, uh, what, three goals. So the, so the you know, yep. crowd was um, crowd was pretty amped up. You know, I mean, that first goal was pretty amazing. It was it was off of a free kick, and he just threaded yeah. it in between uh, the the wall of defenders. It was it was really really well done. So yeah, I mean, that's just kind of the weekend. And as things get warmer and so forth, and you know, just wanting to get out more. I mean, that's just what I'm doing. And obviously, you're, you know, you're you're schooling and you're doing all of your stuff too, and coming up here and doing things as well. Uh, I mean, we got to do, we got to do a baseball game at some point too. So yeah, definitely be up for a Friday night game. Uh, yeah, we'll see if we could do that maybe this month. Mm-hmm. I'm sure Colin would enjoy that quite a bit. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, I'll, I'll we'll look at the schedule. I they're, they're basically doing the whole like six games at home, six games away type of thing. So it's, it's yeah. fairly, fairly nice. Uh, to go down, I th- I think I want to say that the next time we would be able to go just with schedules and stuff. I think the Friday was something, some stupid promotion, like with one of the former like Bachelor contestants. It was like a ladies' night thing. <laughs> <laughs> you want to go meet a former Bachelor contestant during ladies' night? No, I think I'm good. <clears throat> I think I'm good. Maybe they'll play that song, you know, the ladies night song, or, or maybe they'll play some <laughs> Tom Jones or something like that. I'd, I'd be rocking. 
I mean, that's not a. You, you'd imagine some really bad gigs for someone who was on Bachelor because I'm sure they're all nobodies at this point, yeah. fandom wise. But like, it's better than a crappy commercial, I guess. The the <laughs> only one that I know, uh, and, and I only know this because of sports, because at one point Aaron Rodgers, I think younger brother, was on The Bachelor. Oh, really? Or The Bachelorette, technically. Yeah. So he he was he was a contestant on that, and the only reason I remember that coming up is because he talked crap about Aaron Rodgers and, you know, how he doesn't know he doesn't talk to his family and all this stuff. And, you know, we hate his girlfriend and all that crap. So really, yeah. So that was the only reason, cause it just popped up on like things like, you know, like the, the McAfee show and Pat McAfee show. And a few of the, if I remember, it was on one of those like sports things that I've watched. So yeah, that's the, that's the only thing I know about the bachelor bachelorette bachelors in paradise paradise island you know what whatever kind of other paradise they choose to you know real world paradise island i don't know man i I don't (laughs) i don't like reality tv very much yeah reality tv just ruins you it just rots your brain it really does (laughs) it really does so but yeah we're uh we're 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 still trucking along so i i I guess uh before we get too far off hey so how was your week (laughs) After well, we already talked about weeks. the week. <laughs> right. My, my three-day week has been uh, pretty busy. Uh, you know, obviously working full-time and doing school is a juggling act that's not the most fun thing, but it's been interesting, you know, first couple of days diving into everything. Uh, that's pretty much all I've done. I mean, I've been, like I said, a <laughs> bit of insomnia. I've been staying up late and cooking and mm. obviously doing schoolwork, so... I, I don't have a lot going on. I'm not really doing anything specifically to have fun. It, it's kind of sad. I'll sit down, like try and watch a show or uh, play a game, and I'm just I blank. It's like me. Sure. I don't need to. Have been watching the new Halo series for anyone who's got Paramount. I'd suggest that. But oh, really? other than that, yeah, yeah, it's pretty decent. Uh, you probably weren't. Well, you didn't have an Xbox, so you probably weren't too much into that i have i have played halo before um i can't say that i'm like a halo person but there again i was never huge in a first person shooter i mean i I did like counter strike on the pc back in the day and i did i I guess really the only call of duty that i had any real time in would have been black ops and then whatever followed that one okay so whatever the next one after black ops was Modern Warfare too? Maybe. Yeah, that might have been it. Yeah, yeah, it was it was a short window. Um Okay. I was just never quite quick on triggers and everything. Yeah, yeah. So gotcha. yeah, I mean no, it was I'd, it's fine. I played some shooters growing up. Halo just kinda stuck out because it actually has story unlike mm-hmm. a lot of games. And there were books that tied What are you into talking about? Call of Duty had a total story. Don't you remember that one with Ronald Reagan? And the zombies. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm very selective. I still haven't bought the, the stupid Lego Star Wars. It's like I've been like talking about it. It's like I I do want to get it. I just haven't. I I haven't even really turned on any game system. I mean, the the PS4 is just it's just sitting there. I don't yeah, really dust. I don't really even need to use it as a player much anymore. And and the Switch. The Switch was kind of an unwind thing during the pandemic where I would just play like really simple kind of games and just, you know, play that for an hour and, you know, you know, have a have a drink or something like that and just sit down before I went to bed, especially when I was like intermittent fasting. It was just like a brain thing. But Mm -hmm. like, eh, yeah, it it just I don't know. It's fine. Yeah, Yeah, I've only gotten to like episode four with lego star wars i kind of hit a brick wall on that where i wasn't really having fun anymore i don't know if i was just kind of not in the mood for games or if there's something not resonating with the game with me i don't yep. know what's going on there but yeah i i can't even really get into any of the you know old faithfuls like stardew or anything right now so i think it's just me yeah, it's it's yeah, it's probably just a measure measure burnout. Just need to do something else. Hey, yeah. maybe you can Summer's play that coming, guitar on so. your wall. Pl- like play right. guitar, <laughs> play guitar, bro. Well, I'll be home a lot more now, hopefully. So I will be doing that. I did notice one thing when I was doing my courses that uh, when I sit down and 
just like watch a show or something. That's where everything clicked and I get my answers. Now I finally see my brother in law does it as well. And he <laughs> he's watched, you know, The Office and Star Trek and all these long running shows like twenty times throughout in each one. He's like, Yeah, I just throw it on while I work. It's like, how do you function? Like, how do you actually get work done with it? Because I yeah. feel like I would just, you know, stop and watch it, but now I finally understand it, so. <laughs> Background noise. Maybe I just need to start playing some guitar while I'm contemplating my courses. I mean, that's what I do sometimes, you know, just if I am working from home. It is it is kind of nice, and I mean, I, you know, you have not been here since I, I'm pointing to the newest guitar back here. Uh, yeah, you had that on your... Uh, table completely disassembled i think last no, time i was a different one no it wasn't that one okay. no i found this one it was a it was a, f- a special run that they did so it, it's an ash body it's um it's interesting it, it's a uh, pretty vintage vintage spec um it does some interesting sounds but i'm not a big fan of the bridge pickup but what in combination it does in like the middle position when it blends the two is really kind of fun and then the neck pickups really nice so i don't know if i'll keep it or not but i i i have enjoyed playing it a little bit and then that pedal you uh you dusted off and brought <laughs> to me that <clears throat> that thing so there's a story to that so that is the um the old digitech uh, distortion factory the the df7 so D- digitech was a division of dod and dod their claim to fame, this is not a guitar podcast, but here you go. The DOD's claim to fame was the Overdrive 250. Um, that was a, a, an op-amp uh, overdrive pedal that was just really uniquely 70s. And, and it's I've had a few of them over the years, and uh, they're pretty cool. But Digitech was their digital pedal. So all, their, all the Digitech pedals were digital emulations of analog pedals. So mm-hmm. there wasn't, you know, th- there's not a bunch of diodes and transistors and stuff. It's, it's all computer programming. But um, I bought this pedal used uh, when I was probably 19-ish, when I was still, you know, playing music a lot and, and trying to do band stuff. And I did not get it back then. I just didn't really care for it. I... I uh, <laughs> I like the old, uh, the, the old, uh, DOD, the FX 69 grunge. Yeah. <laughs> um, so that was, that was my main overdrive distortion pedal. But anyway, so this one is interesting in a few different ways. So one, it's a multi emulator. So it has like a, a, a tube screamer, a TS nine tube screamer from Ibanez. It has an overdrive 250 in it. It's got the DS one, which is, um, you know, everybody's had a boss ds1 everybody's had Mm -hmm. a boss ds1 i'm pretty sure i have one in my closet right now yeah it's the orange (laughs) pedal everybody's had it it has a one of the like um the the like the digitech like metal death metal or metal mash whatever it was called and there's a couple of other um a couple of other uh pedals in there too that i don't remember I don't think it has the grunge in there, which was disappointing. But anyway, it's actually fun now knowing more about pedals and sounds and all that, going back and playing with it. And really, I mean, the only one that I like is the Overdrive 250. It's actually kind of like a better Overdrive 250. And I, I know right. some, if there are any guitarists, they'll probably say, what the hell are you talking about, brother? But um, but it's pretty cool. And apparently there's some digital like cab simulation stuff, but I haven't really played with it that much to figure that out. So unique pedal but the reason why i got interested in it you've heard me talk about jhs it's a pedal company they have a youtube channel big Mm -hmm. youtube channel yeah and they recently did what they thought was a throwaway episode on the distortion factory and they've done a lot of history of like well a ton of pedal companies dod's gone digitech is gone Mm -hmm. right now currently i think they're the brands are both owned by sony and sony doesn't do anything with them anymore but um, he did this throwaway episode on this pedal, and there is an effect. When they do pedals that are discontinued, the price spikes. So if you go on Reverb, which is a great website for buying and selling uh, you know, gear and pedals and guitars and stuff, you saw this pedal, which had traditionally gone between like, seven, like 70, 80 bucks used, 
right now the lowest price on there that I saw the last time I checked was two hundred and fifty dollars. Oh wow, two hundred fifty dollars <laughs> for a digital pedal from the nineties that nobody really liked back then. Yeah, it's crazy. Somebody's happy clearing out their closet right now. <laughs> yeah, and I don't know if they're selling for that or whatever, but that's what they're being priced at. So it's pretty crazy. And I think I probably paid maybe 20 bucks for it back then. <laughs> it was nice. that, the the grunge, uh, a couple of Arion pedals, which were, uh, I think those were yeah, those were Japanese pedals. They were plastic enclosures. The, mm-hmm. the chorus pedal is one of the most sought-after pedals just because of the chipset they use to, to induce the chorus. But, um, yeah, it's crazy. It's half nostalgia. So yeah, anyway, yeah. that was a long story, dude. And I think we should move on. But the reason <laughs> we had that long story was, uh, you know, because we, we effectively, uh, you know, kind of figured that, uh, we wouldn't have much to talk about in this episode. Right. I was going to say, you might have talked longer about that pedal than <laughs> we'll be able to discuss this comic after we go through it. <laughs> For sure. Well, anyway, I guess uh, I guess we can get into more Star Warsy related topics now, huh? Yeah, finally, we'll see if we can actually make this last as long as the pedal talk. Yeah, so let's talk about NFTs. <laughs> <laughs> well, they are Star Wars NFTs. Yeah, so I mean, for not too long, but for a little while, I've been kind of bumming around with some of the crypto stuff, and I, I'm not here to sell anybody on any of it, but. There, there is an interesting app that I've used, and they just, um, they just launched their first Star Wars comic. They've had some like Star Wars like collectible stuff on there, but this was the first you know comic, and it was a relatively big deal. And I was telling you about it because like this is, um, uh, what was this from? So this was, I think it was just uh, issue one uh, from seventy seven. So Star Wars issue one, 1977. And, um, you know, they had a bunch of different covers. Like the common cover would have been the cover that was on the comic. Uh, you know, like Vader's helmet's like green. <laughs> <laughs> Hanso's blaster's pink. Uh, Luke has a red saber. You know, that typical nice. sort of stuff. You know, a little evil. The uncommon cover was the, uh, I don't remember if it was the first, but I'm pretty sure it was the first um, uh, poster for A New Hope. And then there was some like other artwork and stuff. So I actually wound up getting the, the secret rare one. And kind of the interesting thing is, is like the prices on these things fluctuate wildly. That's all of NFTs and crypto and stuff. And look, guys, I know that there are some of you who really hate NFTs and the you know, the environmental impact of NFTs. I trust me, I totally get it. Um, but, but it's star Wars. So like, give me some slack, but anyway, I got the secret rare one and it, you know, it ratcheted up pretty significantly. Um, like right now, I think the cheapest one to buy is like 1200 bucks and the, the drop was 15. It was a blind drop. So you got whatever you got. And I just so happened to get that one. And I had a little bit of a feeling too. Like I opened it up and I'm waiting for the things to mint. And it's like, I feel like I'm going to get that secret rare. And then I opened it up and (laughs) boom, there it was. So there you go. Good. You know, you could have all, you could have almost made that same. The last bit of that conversation, if you were talking about the old loot crate drops for like Battlefront 2, when it first came out. Dude, you know, I, I actually really <laughs> like Battlefront 2, and we kind of talked about, like, I'm, I wasn't a big first-person shooter guy, but, like, Battlefront 2 actually was kind of fun. Um, I understand well, the, the audio pain. and visuals were spot on. Oh, it I mean, was, it was so immersive. It was cool. It, it just, you know, they, they chose to go the Loot Crate route, and, you know, it was pay-to-play, and pay-to-play is not fun. No. So I, here I am just heavy gunning, just standard, <laughs> like standard heavy gunner, just going out running, tanking, all that stuff. All the officers are, you know, doing their officer crap. I'm just here. <laughs> ah, crap. It's, uh, it's hot. <laughs> you know, just, just having a heck of a time. It's, it was fun stuff. You were essentially the one uh, member of Bad Batch. Yes, essentially. Crap. Drawing a blank on his name right now, but yeah, that was you. <laughs> Wrecker? Wrecker. Yeah, Wrecker. Wrecker. 
So anyway, but yeah, that it was, um, you know, May the 4th, you know, drop and everybody's pretty hype about it. Even the comment, the common comics were in some cases, triple, triple the value of the initial drop price. So that was kind of cool, but that was NFT stuff. Uh, moving on to much more important things. We got a new Kenobi trailer, new Kenobi trailer and, uh, actually did have some new footage, right? So kind of neat. Yeah. Which it. Honestly, I don't know about you. I was kind of worried at the beginning of the trailer. It's like, are they just rehashing everything they already went through in the last trailer? Because it's kind of looking really similar mm-hmm. for a second there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it it kind of gives a different vibe of the show than what I think we had sort of discussed in the in the beginning here. And it kind of seems a little bit more in line with... I don't know what what would what would you what what would you say? It kind of like a like it's a hide and go like, seek or like a hunting sort of episode thing, like somebody with a vendetta. Like one of the inquisitors, our new inquisitor has a vendetta. Right. Yeah, I mean, uh, it, it's kind of reminiscent of Fallen Order, only just kind of cranked up to eleven. It's. It's pretty awesome. Um, I know we had kind of discussed this, theorized on how the show would go, and we thought, well, there's no way they're actually looking for Kenobi because if they actually started looking for him and they got a hint, then it would destroy, you know, kind of the argument of why didn't they just, you know, invade Tatooine and just wreck the place. Mm -hmm. But this is the route they're going. Um I'm kind of okay with it based on this trailer, to be honest. I'm really interested in this uh, this sister um, to find out a little bit more about her. Are you? Get, are you interested in her? I am. I'm interested in sister. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But no, I mean we get we get some pretty cool visuals here. Uh, uh, Obi Wan's firing a blaster, such an uncivilized weapon. We get a little bit of a. Uh, uh, Vader construction going on, all kinds of cool stuff. Yeah, I, I would, I would say so. Um, obviously the kind of Vader reveal is interesting, but some of the dialogue, it's like they're coming, stay hidden or we will not survive type of deal. Um, the little talk with, uh, with Owen. Owen about, um, training Luke. Very reminiscent of the, the book. book. We, just, we just did, yeah. 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 Very reminiscent of the book, which uh, which I thought was was interesting to see kind of what they what they have uh, what they have in store for us. But it, this kind of seems like it's setting itself up to be like Vader's obsession. Yeah, yeah. Which honestly. I'm okay with because that'll only enhance their their little confrontation in a new hope the next time I rewatch it, I feel like. Well also it also makes sense just strictly from the fact that that Vader, formerly Anakin, knows that Obi Wan's alive because Obi Wan walked right. away right. from that fight. And it's <laughs> the the jump between like watching Revenge of a Sith and A New Hope, it's like, oh, yeah, you're still around. Mm-hmm. It's like, well, yeah, why wouldn't you care about that? Like, <laughs> you didn't hunt him down. Yep, exactly. It does kind of uh, potentially point to, like, maybe there is a fake-your-own-death thing at the end for Kenobi. Mm. Mm-hmm. Or maybe yeah. he turns the sister to lie to Vader, maybe. Say that she eliminated Target. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, we had talked about the potential of him uh, uh, turning this sister to the light side of the force, so that could mm-hmm. potentially be a thing. Very possible. Um, I, I, I can kind of hear some people in the background saying, oh, Vader wouldn't be deceived by, by this person. But we've had plenty of stories where dark side users were, were deceived. I mean, Revan. Look at, yeah. look at the Revan book. Um, yeah. And I think that it wouldn't necessarily be a far stretch for Vader because even deep down Vader still has some love for Kenobi. Right. 
under the hate, he's still Anakin Skywalker, and that's the whole reason why he was able to turn in uh, in Episode Six. Mm-hmm. So it's very mm-hmm. possible. Yeah, um, I'd be pretty interested to see how this goes. Now, I I was very against the Empire looking for him initially, but this has piqued my interest. Mm-hmm. I would say so too, and and I think that the only other thing on, on, in addition to that. I'm kind of wondering if we're going to stay off of Tatooine a little bit because here, here's the thing. I mean, like the inquisitors are force sensitive and Luke's on Tatooine. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying clearly Owen's out here doing Owen things. So what if he, you know, we're, I mean, again, just hypothetical, what if, what ifs, but like, Hey, yeah, Luke, let's go into Tashi station and get you some power converters and, Oh my God! There's a lady with a red lightsaber. <laughs> you know, we'd get the same uh, visual cues as we did with the BK fight. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> little goofy animations. Yeah, I don't know. All all I'm saying is like, there's a lot that this could potential potentially open up, and the only thing that I would say is is. I still don't see how you work in a fight between Vader and Kenobi at this point. I don't see that unless well, you're, I unless I, you're, re- I really don't see how it doesn't just kind of ruin some dialogue. I keep going back to the same scene, obviously, but their confrontation on the Death Star makes it very clear. They had not interacted up until that point from Revenge of the Sith. And if you have this confrontation, it, it ruins it. It really does. Well, let me, put, let me put one little earworm in your ear here. What if they do fight and Vader is able to defeat Obi-Wan, but he lets Obi-Wan go? Because he's like, you, you know, like you're broken or you're, you're, you're beaten. Mm. And basically you tells the emperor that he killed him and well, no, just lets him get away. Well, think about way. the dialogue though. Think about the dialogue. It's a presence I haven't felt in a long time. He doesn't, he doesn't say that, Oh my God, it's a presence that I thought was dead. He said, just haven't True. felt it in a long time. So the thing is, is maybe he's like, you know, I don't know. It doesn't really make a lot of sense with the Inquisitors being so crazy about killing Jedi, Order 66, and everything. But it could be like Vader's sort of personal thing where he's like, yeah, go back and crawl in the hole from whence you came. I've defeated you. I'm now the most powerful Sith in the, you know, you can't beat me. You're no threat type of deal. That's true. And I guess the dialogue that I was kind of honing in on more was, you know, last time we were together i was but the student now i'm the master that would kind of mm, yeah that part would be kind of weird if he already beat him in battle True. or if he saw him again after the fight cuz i always interpreted that as you know you defeating me on mustafar kind of gave me that last little piece of training you know to learn from and and, and i don't know maybe i'm just being a gatekeeper here not trying to get anything changed mm-hmm. from the originals cuz it's so hard to you know, retcon all this stuff and then make it make sense anymore. So I don't know. I, I guess this is the logical path to take with how many episodes we have of this show. I mean, you couldn't get into a lot of mini adventures that would really be worth what, what, what are we thinking? Like an hour, an episode roughly. So it, it makes sense to have one big epic battle between uh, this sister and Obi-Wan and potentially a fight with Vader and hit on all the points of that everyone always harps on, what they want to see. So, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it's true. I, I'm not... Yeah, it's tough. It's tough, dude. I still don't think we're on Tatooine, though, at least through some of this. I think we're, we are... We obviously are on some, but I don't think we're on Tatooine the entire time. Which kind of sucks, because I wouldn't mind seeing some more of Luke in this as well. You know, little interactions between Obi-Wan and Luke, and, you know, like we see in some of the books and whatnot. Yeah, it's, it, it is, that, it, that's a tough, that's a pretty tough thing uh, to have. 
it's tough. It's it's very it's very tough. So and uh there there was there was even a part here where like Obi-Wan's even in the system. You know, yeah. I, I'm wondering if that's kind of like one of those like scanning, you know, like old old like temple files or old republic files. Or if this is something where, like, what if... I mean, because I'm looking at it now. He's definitely in Jedi robes. So I, I was The first time I was like, is this, like, Obi-Wan's, like, I don't know, getting a passport? Or he's, like, I don't know, he got caught by the authorities. Right. <laughs> so. Oh, no, he's, you can already... They, they did a good job in the makeup department making him already look a little bit older and grizzled and whatnot well, then, then even how he, then even how old he is and how he looks in person you and obviously yeah. um so they're, they're definitely giving him that tatooine uh tan going on <laughs> yeah kind, kind of looks like it but um it'll be interesting it'll be interesting yeah. to say the least definitely looking forward to it and we are still counting down uh counting down to the end of uh yep. may three more weeks may 27th we get episode one and two which i don't like by the way i don't like that well they're they're dropping a third of it <laughs> yeah i don't like all it at all once. i think it's dumb i think that's a mistake but hey what do i know i wonder if there'll be short episodes and that's why they're compensating in that way that would maybe the first suck. one only be like a half hour roundup like recap of everything going on right at the beginning that would suck. Like directly after Revenge of the Sith. Everything. What are you not understanding? It would suck. <laughs> Just making it worse as I go, coming up with more bad ideas. And nah, dude. Yeah, each of these episodes <laughs> should be an hour. Yeah, they should. They should be an hour. I, I personally think it'd be cool if we could do like some of the old school six part TV shows where it's like an hour and a half per episode. Mm, mm-hmm, Just mm-hmm. a concise little short story movie per episode completely you know uh separate from everything else going on in every other episode yeah yeah for sure well that's kenobi trailer pretty exciting stuff um just have to wait patience patience is key we have one more thing to talk about here and it was actually dropped today, so we've got issue one of the Obi Wan comic. Yeah, Marvel's definitely getting a lot of Kenobi love for May the Fourth. That's yeah, hundred percent. So we have the Kenobi comic, um, pretty cool uh, number one cover with old Obi Wan, old Ben, younger Obi Wan, and then Vader with the twin sons. Now I also got a an alternate cover that has. Uh, Qui-Gon and, and Padawan Obi-Wan on here too, which I thought was a uh, pretty neat little, little anime esque, but still mm-hmm. pretty, pretty cool. Um, but yeah, I, I think your initial, uh, y- your initial thing was, man, this seems short. Yeah. Not that that's necessarily a bad thing. I mean, short, sweet to the point, a good story is better than a bloated comic that sucks, but yeah, it's it's extremely short. I think it's uh, not that this means a lot to everybody, but for those of you who do comicsology, it's uh twenty three total pages to go through. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and yeah, it's <laughs> it's it, it took me like maybe fifteen minutes, ten minutes to get through this whole thing. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So. So, yeah, Obi-Wan Kenobi, Younglings Challenge. (laughs) Yeah. The ultimate destiny of one of the Jedi's most renowned masters fastly fast approaches. I can't even speak. Uh, As he awaits uh, an inevitable storm in the remote deserts of Tatooine, Obi-Wan Kenobi takes time to reflect on and record key moments of historic life long lived. Record moments like a journal, like from the journals. By somebody <laughs> down the line, some I CGI am guy. I'm telling you, telling you, <laughs> telling you, maybe, man. maybe throw happen. some of that in Mandalorian for no, no reason. <laughs> we don't need any more in Mandalorian. Just let Mando be Mando, not Boba no, Mando. Be, not they would do that in Boba Fett season two of 
book of Boba Fett. Oh, actually, one real quick thing here, if I can, if I can find it quickly. Um, so, I am a, I am an art f- liker. I like art. Do you like art? Yeah, sure. Sweet. Well, as soon as I can find this person's name, there we go. Andriana Vanderstelt. Vanderstelmt. There's like an LT at the end. I met her at Celebration in 2019, and I bought one of her prints, and that was the the Yoda one. You've seen the Yoda one. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's one of my favorites. So that year, she did three separate prints. One was an R2. One was... um, uh, Leia putting the the disc in in uh, R two, and then the other one was was this uh, really great uh, print of um, of Yoda in the in the swamp uh, on Dagobah. You know, basically this was the decisive moment where he was going to he decided to train Luke. It was really really good. So she is coming back with a new one, and I'll send you this later. But she came back with a new one for celebration this year, and it's called A Friend. And it's it's epic. Her colors are great, but basically she she apparently really is a big R2 fan because it features uh, Grogu. It features R2-D2, like Grogu reaching for R2. And then mm-hmm. in the background, you have this sort of like almost ghostly looking Luke with his uh, lightsaber drawn to the side. And... It is epic. The problem is you have to pre-order it and you can only pre-order it for pickup at Star Wars Celebration. It's one of, it, you, there are only 250 prints of it. Um, Cause like mine was one of 250 and it was signed by her numbered and signed. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm really jealous because I sold my ticket recently. Uh, there's no, it just wasn't going to work out for me to go. Um, but yeah, I, I'm I'm really sad that I won't be there to get it. I do know I think a couple of people, and I've thought about asking. And the thing is, yeah. the print's only seventy bucks, uh, and I want it. <laughs> <laughs> and I want the other ones too. Like I, I uh, you know, I follow her on Instagram. Her Instagram is just to be fair here. Her Instagram is art by Adriana, and uh, it, it's it's really fantastic. Yeah, she 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 does some she she does um, not only Star Wars stuff, but she also does a lot of fantasy stuff too, uh, some like pencil sketching and stuff like. So it's it's actually all really really good. But mm-hmm. uh, yeah, I want it, and I want it now. <laughs> so so that was that was pretty cool. That sorry had to throw that in there. That that had come up this week. I'm gonna I'm gonna throw you the picture of that print. Uh, yeah. later and you might even want one too so anyway yeah so we can both be mad that we won't get it <laughs> i'm <Be great. laughs> i might ask somebody who's going to see if they can't grab it for me while they're there but anyway it's fine okie dokie ready to jump in this comic yeah let's get in so what did you think about the art style before we kind of get into the content um because to I me it feels like the... two different art styles yeah, the present day was extremely different, I felt like, and I would say that the present day was, well, there's even kind of a split there, because like when he's outside, it's super high def, really, <laughs> they they took their time on the work, and they gets inside, and it's, I don't know, it's almost like a, I don't even want, know what to compare this art style to, but his face is way different. Yeah, it, not it, really a fan of it. Right, it, it does. It kind of looks like they use three different artists in this. Yeah, um, and it just says that there's there's one artist here, uh, Ario Anadito, and Christopher Cantwell was the writer for this. Hmm. So, but it does it lo- it does look like three different styles. So, as as the Darth had said, we start. Outside, we see the twin sons on Tatooine, and Obi Wan is sensing uh, that a storm is coming. Oh, hey, did you catch this line where he's like, "Oh, uh, yeah, big storm." That was a, oh, 20, 20 years ago. Now, wait a minute. Yeah, 
Hmm. Yeah. Are you talking about the first time you were on Tatooine? That one storm that we got in the movie that was like, didn't look that bad? Is that the right. storm he was talking about? Well, he certainly isn't talking about when he drops off Luke. <laughs> so. Yeah. But there again, the timeline doesn't work for like. Would that work for Attack of the Clones? Well, he's also not talking about a sandstorm, by the way. He's talking about rain. Rainstorm. Yeah. Exactly. It didn't rain in, in Force and, and then in Phantom Menace. No. Uh, and that wouldn't be 20 years ago. Uh, yeah, it seems so. a little, uh, little, little <laughs> sus. Are we rewriting Luke's age? Are we, re- God, are we rewriting not. the Skywalker right. twins' age? Because it's a he's little been creepy for- that... That now like, he, now that he's Leo. been fighting for like three years to get off of tattoo. <laughs> One more harvest. One more harvest. Well, it's like, it, is, is, it a li- is it a little creepy that like, you know, Leia being like effectively a teenager was dating Han Solo, who was like in his 30s, like from a canon standpoint? <laughs> Are we trying to revise history a bit? She was a, a general in the army. Her age does not matter. <laughs> space you know i don't know space ages i'm just saying i thought that was weird hey the rotation the planetary rotation of alderaan might be a little different uh, than on okay. solo in space so how do they age at the I same mean, there's, rate there's a galactic do they standard age at the same galactic rate? standard but whatever it's fine do they age at the same rate a lot of light space man of galactic space. standard calendar it's yeah. okay so anyway then we get inside and we actually have Obi Wan writing in his little journal. So yeah. his little journal that would look great in an X Wing. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Being read by a certain somebody. Exactly. Well anyway, so Obi Wan starts to do a little remembrance here and we kind of get excuse me, get into the meat of our story. And again, sort of a change in art styles again as we see a a young Obi Wan like a kid Obi-Wan, like like seven. <laughs> yeah. In the Jedi Temple. And this is a very generic art style. We kind of go back to... It's a little anime. Almost, almost like a... I don't know. Kind of like a, a cheap version of the... Um, oh, my God. The 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 new the new Star Wars yeah the the ones we've been going over the visions no 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 the comics uh, I'm drawing oh, High Republic on. High Republic thank you oh my God yeah the High Republic comics almost like a cheap version of that hmm. just yeah I don't know I mean it, it's I didn't really dislike it much but it it just seemed a, a weird contrast um, but look there is one thing that I'll say. Obi-Wan always finds the girl. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Every time. Every single Hello time. There. Hello there. <laughs> <laughs> so we have Giren, um, oh, what was her name? Giren, uh, did we have a last name? I know they mentioned her last name. Let me flip ahead here. You don't happen to remember it, do you? No, I don't. Oh, and also, I'm not going to lie, the first time I saw her, like the first cutaway view, I didn't know it was a girl. <laughs> uh, yeah, short hair, a little a little bit ambiguous, for yeah. sure. Uh, it, they they kind of def- seem to define it a little bit more as we, as we go along. I really can't fi- find that, because I, I do remember... Uh, that they sp- we'll, we'll we'll find it we'll find it as as we go along here. But she's a part of a clan, new character by the way. I did look it up. Uh, actually, I wonder if I still have it in my search history. Rand, Rand, yeah, Gear and Rand. I jumped ahead quite a bit to find that. There you go. <laughs> so again, new character, but she's outside chilling, you know, on the ledge. Uh, can't find the stars because, as Obi Wan points out, you don't know how to look for them. I guess, and yeah, that, uh, that's Obi Wan's only uh, proficient power right now is he can find stars. Yeah. With well, the force. you just know how to look for them. You're a real great guy, Obi Wan. Um, kind of suck at fighting, but I got you. I'll protect. <laughs> I mean, you. kind of. He's he's just he's just a little kid paddle in here. <laughs> 
But anyway, so Garen is having visions of her her father in uh, great pain and basically wants to run away. Uh, Obi-Wan tries to do a little bit of reasoning here, like go see Master Yoda, and she's just like, eat and over over the side. Just yeah, eat go, it herself. Go see Master Yoda about my issues with missing my father and attachment and whatnot. Yeah, that'll help. That'll that'll Yoda will totally help out with that. Absolutely. <laughs> so Obi-Wan does make a choice here to follow her. And kind of the gist here that, that I got was that she's kind of a little bit of a protector to him in, in a way. He's and we sort of saw this in Master and Apprentice where Obi-Wan's not always sure-footed in a lot of things. He's he's kind of like, you know, a natural, but not necessarily like the A-plus student type of deal. Yeah, he's definitely into the rules and regulations of everything. He wants to follow everything by the books, but he's not necessarily right. the star student. Yeah, exactly. So he's chasing her uh, through, basically through the streets of Coruscant, and... Uh, you know that that's kind of where where we where we meet meet some of our thugs. Yeah. So in our thug group here, we have uh, we've got a Rodian, we have um, a Trandoshan, we have the one that kind of looks like he has balls on his chin, and uh, a robot guy. Yeah. Yeah. So they're gonna you know they're gonna like I don't know. We're gonna we're gonna get you, kid. We're gonna take you and do things with you and stuff. <laughs> Is the one the race that Obi Wan cuts off his arm? But, well, it was one of those from the bar. Yes. Yeah. I. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Right. yeah and in A New Hope. Yep. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So anyway, Obi Wan does get off a little bit here. He he throws back the Rodian. He crunches two of them together. And then he he gets kicked in the back of the head by the robot guy, who seems to be the real smart one of the group. And then uh, his friend Garen just comes down with a freaking missile drop kick from the top rope. You know, <laughs> yeah, that's my friend. <laughs> you nerf herder. <laughs> <laughs> the language. And then we get a new character. By the way, yep. Go ahead. Yeah, n- let me just say these two panels. If you look at him long enough and closely enough, that does not even really look quite like the same person. I don't know. Maybe it's just the low detail of the second picture, but they just don't look the same. Mm. Yeah, it seemed to get a little little tiny bit lazy in there, I would say. Uh, let's see here. So we have Nordrus, who's a lieutenant in the Black Sun, uh, you know what species she is, huh? Uh, shit. <laughs> oh, my God. I was trying to stall because I couldn't remember what they're called either. You know, the ones with the <laughs> horns. <laughs> yeah, the... <laughs> the the not yeah. quite Darth Maul species, but that one bounty hunter from, uh, from Aftermath. You remember? <laughs> I keep wanting to say... Deveronium for nah, some stupid not. reason. Those are the I know devil, it's not Deveronium. The, the devil yeah. guys. Yeah. <laughs> nah, it's fine. It doesn't really matter. Um, but anyway, so we have our ringleader here, and, and Garen was uh, effectively trying to buy her way off planet with a little silver medallion thing. But of course, when you deal with thugs, you get thug activity, and <laughs> I, I like our two little overall wearing, wearing dudes. They... They run up, oh, 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 I got you, got you in handcuffs, <laughs> yeah. can't move. <laughs> By the way, I, I love Obi-Wan's argument. It's like, you, you kept a hold of that medallion? You, that, that's forming an attachment. You can't do that. It's like, I'm not attached to it. I'm giving it away Hey, <laughs> as we speak. Well, and, and also <laughs> clearly showing his own attachment to her, but it's like, rules for right. thee, not for me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so the kids are captured, but... Um, you know, Garen kind of calms Obi Wan down. They're able to break out of the cuffs, and then do the the big epic leaping jump, jump, jump. You know, jump around, jump the shark, uh, get the heck totally out of the dodge. Totally thought she was gonna get shot in this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
Well, and here's where Obi-Wan truly becomes useful. We're totally lost. No, you remember the stars that I told you about? This plot point would be important later. They're there. Trust me. I told you. Okay, bye. Yeah. Oh, oh okay, but no kiss? Okay. Yeah, and this is kind of a weird one. I, I'm, I, I'm wondering about the lesson here because effectively we're, we're being told here that Obi-Wan never sees her again. Right. So... What do we? What, what was the point of that story? Yeah, he didn't really grow as a Jedi in any way. I mean, yes, it's someone from his past that he's reminiscing about, but like this whole mini adventure really didn't change him and seemingly in any way. And maybe this will be expounded upon a little bit more in the next comic, but it just kind of seems like a short story without a purpose. Yeah, maybe, but it does f- make me feel a lot like from the journals of Obi-Wan Kenobi. Just like, I'm remembering things as I sit alone. Yeah, also, why does Yoda, like, punish him for this? Um. Yeah, I was he's a tra- little bit... He's trying to bring her back, and he's like, all grumpy face, think on this tonight, you will, as he f- force pulls a friggin' mop towards himself. It's like, dude... He's trying to bring back another Jedi. Why? <laughs> yeah, that was kind of interesting. So, yeah, Obi Wan returns. He is greeted by Yoda. Gone she is. I tried to get her to stay, but in your youngling clan, kept you safe. She did. Watched over you. Do you know who will keep you safe now, Obi Wan Kenobi? You. So I think the lesson that Yoda's kind of trying to trying to bear down is like you have to be more self sufficient. You can't rely on other people to effectively save you. And he's like, think on it. But yeah, the 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 art in that panel as he's bringing the broom to him did seem overly grumpy, you know. Mm-hmm. But I mean, it's it's not a bad lesson. It's just more the animation for me. Yeah, yeah, I'd agree. Yeah, but anyway, uh, in his little journal, I, I never saw Garen Ran again. I do not know what became of her or whether she was able to save her father. My only hope is that she did not succumb to her fear, just as I hope to continue holding back my own of what is to come. Now, what is to come? Are we still talking about the storm or are we talking about some other stuff? I'd imagine... At this point, he's probably not scared of storms anymore. Are you sure? Maybe, maybe he is. Maybe that's his, that's his secret fear. Like some people don't like enclosed spaces or, you know, lightning. His is just like, you know, just storms. It's scary. You know, I hate to say it because it would be so cheesy, but I kind of hope that in this Kenobi show, we just get a little... If we start off early enough in, like right after he drops off Luke, we just get a little comment like, now I understand why Anakin hated Sans so much. This sucks. That would be a good, that'd be a good throwback. (laughs) Yeah, I like that. Or he just starts saying, it's like, you know, I never really thought about it much, but Sand really is rough and coarse. It does get everywhere. I wonder where I've heard that before. Well, he didn't even hear that. That was just an Anakin line to Padme, so... Right. So he, well, he wouldn't even no, know. No, we'll just say, uh, during his trainings, he went on and on about sand, and now I finally get it. He always had sand in his crawl. Explain to me how a boy who's not been on Tatooine for 10 years still has sand all <laughs> over him. He never got it off of him. Sometimes as a child, I would just shake him, and sand would just pour from every orifice of his body. We don't know what happened. It seems like a genetic mutation. Maybe it's something to do with the midichlorians. They just kept bringing the sand along with him. The midichlorians, they just produced <laughs> life in the form of sand. Oh, my God. Tatooine's all midichlorians. That's all the sand is. <laughs> that's how the black melons are created. T- Tatooine's just a force giant that's pulling sand in towards itself. <laughs> the core of Tatooine is a force giant. <laughs> Look, if I could whistle the X-Files theme song right now, I'm not even going to try at this point. But if I could do that, that'd be perfect. It's just like 
Star Wars Conspiracies. That's the next show. That's our new show that we're going to start, Star Wars Conspiracies. <laughs> It'll be all about how Kathleen Kennedy's getting fired next week. Kathleen Kennedy, made of sand. Made of sand. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> she is coarse and a bit rough. Oh, jeez. That'd be terrible. <laughs> so that was issue one. Issue two is yeah. not out until June. Yeah. Yeah. Clearly, they didn't want to completely tie this in with Kenobi. Well, they've done this or with... maybe they... Yeah, I mean, they've done this with a, with a, couple, of, a couple of things. They've spaced some stuff out. Like, if you remember the... Um, the Kylo Ren tie-in comic, mm, um, the four-part series. Yeah, yeah that was yeah. oddly spaced too. So well, I think the last one actually came out after the movie, right? I think it did. If I remember or maybe correctly. half of them did. I I can't remember now. <laughs> yeah, I just remember it being a really strange release schedule. I, I I thought they would have dropped everything way before the movie, so you could kind of like get into it. But hey, what do I know? I'm just a loser, baby. <laughs> All right, that's our comic, man. What were your what were your overall thoughts? What what parting parting thoughts? I'm not rating comic books, by the way. Yeah, no. Like I said, I mean, I, I kind of had some uh, fears about the the length of the comic, but ultimately, it didn't really have a lot of fluff. It short, sweet, and to the point. And art style was a little bit shaky for me. the the first The first third of the art style was very well done, I thought, and the story didn't have a ton of importance but it was entertaining so yeah i'd say it was a decent comic all around Mm -hmm. just something to get you excited about the kenobi series obviously i think we'll we'll have more to look forward to with the next comic having qui-gon in it i mean those interactions are some of the best moments in star wars i think between kenobi and qui-gon so i will be looking forward to that agreed agreed so, yeah, man, that's another another bit of Kenobi down. Now, <clears throat> I was actually just looking at this, and we might have to talk about next week a little bit, because originally we were slating the Brotherhood book, right? Mm-hmm. The uh, the new new book. Uh, uh, what was this uh, Mike Mike Chen Mike Chen? And how long is this bad boy gonna be? It is. That is pages. Oh my god! Everything. My internet has acted so <laughs> strange today. It's like it's I don't know. It's just taking longer than it should. Um, wow! It won't even let me pop it open. Where is the? Uh, there we go. Buttons, dude. Buttons. Figure out your darn phone. So it's uh, almost thirteen hours. Jonathan Davis is our narrator. That drops on the tenth, <laughs> which is Tuesday. So we're, yeah, we're that ain't gonna happen. Yeah, we're we're, we're <laughs> probably gonna have to talk about it and and sort of see what we can do uh, schedule wise, um, because we we might switch up. We might do approaching storm then next week, and then the following mm-hmm. week do brotherhood. Possibly just do a bit of a switcheroo in our schedule, if that works for you. Yeah, I mean that's fine. That that would make it the uh, week before Kenobi then. Yeah. Yep, exactly. So that would that would be a good way to jump right into Kenobi from that book. Cool. Well, seeing as we're so good at doing this, I figured I'd probably you know let you guys know. So yeah, next week uh, we'll be looking at the Approaching Storm, which is a kind of a Clone Wars era book. Should be interesting, kind of one we had on the docket for a while. And then the following week we will do uh, Brotherhood, which is uh, a new one that'll drop next week on the tenth. So obviously, like you know, like just like buy it. You know, or whatever. Like, just give them your money. Yeah, man. like, like, like I am right now because I know that if I don't, then I'll forget about this switch, and then I'll look at our list yeah, right. and screw myself. That's right. Well, <laughs> yeah, we did that. Well, you did that. Uh, what was it? You read the Kenobi book when we were doing what? Uh, it was. Was that New Jedi Order? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I believe so. Yeah, yeah. So, it, yeah, I just mixed up the weeks. It was like. Or was it one of the uh, the kids' novels? I don't remember. I'm just going to say New Jedi Republic. Order. So I think it was New Jedi Order in the following week we were going to do Kenobi or something like It doesn't matter. Or no, it was comics. Or ah, who cares? Eh. Who cares about our how we mess up? We never mess up. Never. I'm pretty. Just like I won't mess up with the approaching storm because I'm 
buying it now. Yeah. So <laughs> we'll, we'll be back next week with Approaching Storm, Following Week Brotherhood. And then after that, Kenobi series starts, releases on Monday. Obviously, we're not trying to get ahead of the curb. Uh, I'm sure you guys have a lot of podcasts out there that will try and release things the night of. But we always wait until Mondays because that's how we like to do the things around here. Mm -hmm. Well, folks, I think that's a show. Do we have anything else we need to talk about? No, I think we are good. Cool, cool. All right. Well, special shout out to Zoom, which, uh, you know, unless you pay for it because we're broke, uh, you know, they they impose 40 minute, uh, 40 minute time limits. And this is the first time, right? That we've ever had to yes. stop a show? No, not really. It's not the first time. But yeah, we had to stop Very it. Very first so. time. I didn't even know where my stop button was, honestly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I got some stitching to do, but it's all good. We're, we're fine. If you can figure out where we stopped and started up again, you win a cookie, and the cookie is in your kitchen. And if you don't have a cookie in your kitchen, then... Uh, you win sadness. I mean, just be sad about because it. Because you really should at least keep one type of cookie in your kitchen. Correct. What's your favorite cookie? Mm. Good homemade peanut butter cookie. Peanut butter cookie is mm. good. Solid cookie. Mm. No bakes. No bakes, of course. No bakes. Yeah. yeah. Nice, soft. I forget which brand it is. It's one of the big box brands but they're like little little tiny super chewy with chocolate chunks uh yeah, just like chips ahoy yeah it's probably chips ahoy yeah. i'm drawing a blank on cookie brands other than chips ahoy so girl, we'll say it's girl chips scout ahoy. cookies yeah, i never got into girl, girl scout cookies all that much i don't know why Jeez. i guess i'm just too cheap mm-hmm. yeah probably well anyway folks that was entertaining that was an entertaining <laughs> end of the end of the entire episode here but anyway cookies <laughs> cookie monster yeah <laughs> so if you uh, if you'd like to interact with the show or let us know what you thought about the comic or anything else going on, uh, any theories about Kenobi as it comes up, uh, feel free to you know let us know. Twitter at TC Plan Podcast, Facebook, and or just send us a big old email to TC Plan Podcast at gmail dot com. Be more than happy to discuss any of those uh, amongst ourselves on the show. Uh, but I think that's all we got for you now. So, uh, y'all have a good rest of your week. And as always, may the fourth be with you. <laughs>